In this piece, what follows is a set of questions and concerns that attempt to deconstruct binaries and locate a in third space piece, of existence what in knowledge production of through research and practice that as experimentation. To binaries and locate a third space of existence in knowledge production through research and practice as experimentation. In 1935, Erving Schrodinger put a cat in a box and with it let the cat out of the bag. Is it dead? Is it alive? A most banal question suddenly erupted. Surely we know with certainty whether something is dead or alive. Maybe that's why criminals are only wanted in these two forms. Just as surely, perhaps, we know whether it is true that the cat is dead or alive, or whether it's false that the cat is dead or alive. But ask around. No, literally, ask around. And there's still no answer. The reality is that Schrodinger is playing with us, just as the Geiger counter is playing with the cat. Beginning with Schrodinger's cat and the question of its existence provides an interesting entry point into the realm of truths and falsehoods. Through the course of this presentation, the boundaries that divide these two opposing concepts are increasingly blurred and revealed to be artificial and movable. They are temporary temporal fixities that are often challenged through documents as proof, proof that often presents itself as visual or textual information with little room for interpretation. However, it is becoming increasingly evident that the visual form can easily be manipulated and reconstructed for specific motivations and leanings. This disbelief in the visual has caused an imperative shift in recognizing other forms of knowledge production as admissible. As Christopher no, Binney stated, Binney once said, I'm, I'm not, not interested, interested in, in the ontological and lexical truth claims, of, claims images, of images, but of contemporary, but of contemporary mythologies, mythologies and, evaluations. and evaluations. In an attempt to satisfy Binney's demand, we embarked on a journey of creating mythologies. For this presentation, we embarked on a destinationless journey with an obsession of seeking what is and isn't present, presenting a present, performing the presentation and finally this present performance all not with each other and create an entanglement that can only be experienced in this given moment and space this cyclical nature of performativity creates augmented versions of an experienced truth that cannot be claimed as singular it does not exist at the same as, as the same in two minds or, or two hearts and hence performance sort of wiggles in between truths and falsehoods, blurring these boundaries and creating a third space of inquiry and curiosity, as well as knowledge production and transmission. Perhaps we can call this third space authenticity. Now this space of authenticity can also maybe be understood from the perspective of a diminished emphasis on our sensibilities entirely, in a way that it operates from a place of intuition or, or inebriation. The Norwegian psychiatrist Finn Schroederud jokingly suggested that humans are born with their blood alcohol level 0.05% too low. Now, although an unconventional claim, it formed the basis for a Danish comedy drama film titled Another Round. The four friends decide to test Schroederud's hypothesis by attempting to maintain their blood alcohol level at 0.05% throughout their working hours, analyzing its impact on personal, professional and social relationships. The hypothesis seems to suggest that our authentic selves exist on this border between control and chaos, between drunkenness and sobriety, sanity and insanity. Now, this borderland is where we propose for this third space to be built. A temporary structure mimicking nomadic culture to embrace its temporal quality, its constant state of transition. An authenticity that is not grounded in any universal essence or principle of being, but one that opens itself, unfolds itself in and to multiplicities. One that is always in between, always wiggling and jostling between truths and falsehoods, never reducible to one or the other node, always itself folding within both. A space that eschews any partition or distribution, always redistributing, redistributing, recutting. It is always a repartee, the art historian Arthur Danto considered a bronze statue of a cat in the Columbia University campus. 
The cat has been chained to an iron railing, presumably to prevent its theft. Now, given that cats sometimes wear chains and that the chain is physically connected to the statue by a collar, the question is whether we should include the chain in our reading of the artwork. Is this a chained sculpture of a cat or a sculpture of a chained cat? The chain is connected to a railing, so should we include that too? And the campus of which the railing is a part? Where does the art end and the world begin? Tanto argues that we must always make a semantic inter interpretation of what constitutes the work of art as distinct from, for example, the wall on which it hangs. Barad states that every experiment requires that we make a cut that establishes its boundaries. This cut circumscribes the field and it decides what is in and what is out and it determines what effects are produced, which is to say what it means. To be sure, this is not simply another state but precisely the upheaval of states that this cut represents. It is the plebeian utterance on Aventine Hill announcing their secession, an authentic space constituted in movement, dynamism, and metamorphic games. And it revels in these games. It does not seek or strive. It does not yearn for truth, here with a capital T, nor does it meekly submit to the false, here with a capital F. It resists, but only always up to a point. It subsists in precisely this playful suspension, darting one way, then another, only in ephemeral movements. Transient transformations. Because any metamorphosis is always superjected by another and subjected to a trace of forms past. And this is what the plebeians perform. Their repartee is not a new distribution, a repartage. Instead, it is the opening up of this third space, the unfolding of authenticity, an unfolding as and in multiplicity in the assemblages of what is to come and what has been, you know, the, the life and death of the cat in the box. Perhaps in a word we can think of this authenticity as pure becoming, never arrived, never stabilized, sort of always on its way. Entrapped between truth and falsehood in this third space, authenticity is the becoming truth and the becoming false. It is a vector, a line. Perhaps, in a word, we can think of this authenticity as pure becoming. Never arrived, never stabilized, always on its way, and trapped between truth and falsehood. In this third space, authenticity is the becoming truth and the becoming false. It is a vector, a line. It is like the becoming indigenous of a hybrid seed never complete, always striving. The Gondi farmer buys her seeds from a market and spends years gradually converting them to indigenous varieties, each feeding of a homegrown fertilizer, each preparation of the soil, each sowing and each application of a homemade forest-derived pesticide pulls on the hybrid seed. It grounds and earths the seed. Over generations, that is what these durationalities are for a seed, the seed locates itself in a folding with indigenous modes of knowledge and practice. We find an inescapable performative dimension here, the Gondi farmer's every performance of a making indigenous of the seed, her buying the hybrid seed, her tilling the soil, her sowing, feeding, harvesting, retilling, re-sowing, and so on, is an echo of the seed's performance of this metamorphic game. Folded within this embodied performance of the Gondi farmer is the becoming indigenous of the seed. The seed does not transform into its other in any straightforward way. Instead, enveloped in a process, a performance, it is in constant movement towards its other and away from itself. The becoming indigenous of the hybrid seed is at once the becoming indigenous of a world. The folding together of self-propelling metamorphosis with a wisdom of the ages. It is the performance by the Gondi farmer of an other way of knowledge production, of truth making and the performance of a different world, a transient world for sure. One that lives on in memory, in recollections, in retelling, reenactments, and representations. Always a little different, always inflected. But this is a game without frontiers. 
There is no barrier to cross, no wall to jump over, no fence to crawl under. It is an open field, like football, not the American variety with downs and scrimmages, just endless passes in all directions. And this is crucial, because the hybrid seed is always pulling back, a becoming hybrid. The cat's metamorphic game is constantly pulled back, and when we find proofs of the cat being dead and alive at once, an attempt to turn away from the lichtung opened before us. The wild wig is being recovered by the forest just as it is created. Every metamorphosis is captured, valorized, reified. This third space is territorialized. Deep in the north, in an island where no grass grows, we find a little vault. <laughs> A seed bank. I mean it the seeds of the world, or rather the seeds of many worlds, carefully selected, analyzed, studied, and stored. Imagine how many seeds are uprooted, how many frozen in their metamorphic games, how many more hybridized in exactly this way. What occurs at Svalbard is a capturing. The vault is its apparatus. And is there more clear evidence of this than the fact that, like any good bank, the Svalbard seed world does not return seeds? Seeds, or rather worlds, that no longer exist, remain documented, catalogued, and profiled on the frozen island far to the north. Now, when we think of this, we sort of realize that nothing implicates us more. There is nowhere for us to hide anymore. We are Svalbard. And there's no louder jacuzzi than this. For are we not precisely capturing, territorializing? How are we any better than our gear? Are we not simply unwitting conquistadors? When we present to you here the Gondi farmer's performative construction of a third space, we're also instantly closing it up. The becoming indigenous of a world that she performs is in the very act of us visualizing it here, extinguished, destroyed, bombed out. The world she constructs is transported by us into conference chambers and lecture theatres, presented to you all here today in this academic space, as if we can simply occupy this third space, as if it has always been ours to occupy. Because that is precisely what we do here in appropriation, a colonization in which the indigenous becomes academic. And to us, this raises an important set of questions. What are the ethical and political, or rather the ethico-political stakes of this operation? How do we navigate this open field? Perhaps there's some sort of ethical comportment, some orientation that enables us to do justice to a third space without a territorialization. At the same time, perhaps there isn't, and we're just doomed to always appropriate, always colonize. I think these are the really crucial questions. What are the contours of our ethico-political attunement to process the performances of a becoming indigenous? Can we ever think of this in terms of a certain symbiosis or mutuality? Is that where the third space can be given a little breathing room, given a chance to thrive? Maybe one such mutuality subsists when we begin to think of access, of the accessibility of academic and arts practice to the indigenous. When the Svalbard seed vault allows not only the deposition of seeds, but also their dispersal, accessibility in this form enables a dialogue between worlds, one that allows the construction of another world, Moi Otros. Maybe this is the really challenging task, a task we ourselves do not pretend to achieve here in this presentation, but continue to strive towards. And so, this presentation remains a brutal capture. There is no escaping the fact. The third space is gone. It is assimilated, homogenized into the world of the proof, the text, and the image. Why else do you think we have a video presentation? <laughs>